you're an artist and, and process is important to artists, mm. right? And obviously, bro, it's very, very important to you. Mm. Do you think it's important also to, to viewers? I, I like to think it is. Like when I view art, I think process is one of the things I'm thinking about when I look at somebody's um, artwork. You okay. think the same? Um, look, I run a contemporary art space as well, just because I don't have enough hats on. Um, I have Stocker and Kitan, um, which is a, a thousand square meter butter factory with three three art spaces that are curated plus a massive um, stock room space. Um, so we've been running for thirteen years, and we show three. We have three shows every six weeks. It's a lot of art that's gone through the doors. Um, the power of Stockroom is that, and why I think it's been really successful is because it's like public artwork. It's a surprise attack space. So it's on. It's in a country town called Kyneton. Um, it's on a tourist belt, so it's in Piper Street, which is known as the style capital of central Victoria. Um, it's... We get probably 80% tourist trade who have no fucking idea what they're walking into. We have a little sign on, it's a massive building um, and it has a little sign out front that says Stockroom um, and that's about it. So there's not even any windows, there's just big glass doors that you walk through and, and you just see like people that are reeling going, well, what have I just walked into? But they're kind of committed at that point and so suddenly they have to confront their um, realities with contemporary art. Um, we show a massive broad range of artists from contemporary craftspeople through to, you know, um, really contemporary artists at the forefront of what they're doing. Like our next exhibition, which is opening Saturday, this Saturday coming is Cameron Robbins, who um, lots of your listeners would know as the guy who does the wind drawings, who had the solo show at Mona and is internationally renowned as, as an incredible artist who harnesses the physics of nature through his process. And then next door, we've got a, a young and amazing emerging artist called Nicholas Burridge, who melts fucking rocks for Christ's sake. He's a, he's a hero. Um, he, um, for my shit box, um, I'm doing, sorry, I'm doing the shit box rally. There's another hat. We'll talk about that later. Um, but he painted racing stripes on the bonnet of my car and put gunpowder up it and then lit it and made these most incredible like racing stripes you've ever seen on the car. But, um, I'm getting really off topic here, but that's okay. Cause it's all fun. What the point I'm trying to make is that I've show artists who are really conceptually and process driven. And the art world, you know, really engages with that. The educated, you know, educated art world really engages with that stuff. Um, but then there's this thing called the general public, which which the art world really needs to remember is about 98% of people. Um, and I'm not sure they give a toss about process. Um, some do. Um, certainly once you spend the time to engage with the artists, and Cameron Robbins is a great example of this. For your um, listeners and viewers who don't know um, Cameron Robbins, he um, harnesses the physics of nature, basically. The body, I'll speak to one body of work he does because it's the most well-known, and it's. Uh, but, but he creates wind drawings. Um, so he has a, a drawing instrument that's powered by the speed and direction of the wind. So you have like... Uh, you have uh, like a like on a, a is it a barometer uh, like on a weather station that me where it measures the speed of the wind. You've got these cups which goes through a series of pulleys, which then is connected to a flexible arm, which is connected to a pen, which then goes to the page, and then it kind of oscillates and creates these beautiful line work. And then the page is on an on a on a board which is connected to pulleys, which is connected to an arm like on a windmill. So as the wind changes, it turns the page, and you get these beautiful beautiful durational works which are a completely new way to map the 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 um the changing weather so the wind conditions the rain all these things influence the work and then it becomes about how how Cameron um tunes the instrument and um and then intervenes and chooses to stop the drawing so heavily process driven um Joe Plummer comes in um, and looks at it and some scribbles on a page, page. Then I start talking to Joe 
about, you know, for example, at the back of the space, Joe always is drawn to the, so I'm really being really generalizing here, but Joe's drawn to another Cameron Robbins piece we have, which is this incredible fog vortex, which um, um, uses the updraft of the enormous chimney we've got from the butter factory days. But Joe will get drawn into that. He'll ask me about that piece and I'll go, oh, well, dude, check this stuff out. And then I engage with him about this idea of Cameron's. And the next thing you know, Joe, Joe Plummer's just bought his first contemporary artwork because process becomes really important once you have that in. So I suppose to answer your question, it's all about how you choose to give the viewer the in. So with my work, Joe Plummer will see, for example, that it's metal and then he'll be like, oh, cool, what's going on there? And then hopefully he'll, you know, engage further and look at the technique and, and, and those things. Or he might just, you know, if it's a car, it's a no-brainer. Um, you know, like Joe, Joe Palmer's going to be into the car. But, um, you know, it, it, it's a it process, yeah, is incredibly important to get to that point. But where what I think is, is the most important with when you're an artist is to think about what the general public are going to think about that at that point. And really the process doesn't mean shit at that point. It's what they see. And then you get to loop back into the process. And that's when the ma that, that's when more magic happens because if you've done your job right, then suddenly there's a whole new dialogue opening for someone who's maybe never considered those that language before. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I hope to get there. That'd be so cool. <laughs>